All right, so this is the collection of glass beer bottles from this past year. I don't, did I do this junior year, Ben? No. Okay, so just the past my senior year, um, and I guess part of the summer, I do drink a lot of beer out of cans, but uh, they don't look as good. Um, I'm going to go in reverse order, starting with this. It's the only one that didn't make it there because geometrically it doesn't fit very well. Um, but this is a short sprue, sticky, icky, icky, American IPA. Uh, I, you will see that a lot of these are IPAs. It's probably my favorite thing to drink, period. Um, this is like short sprues, they make solid stuff. It's a local thing, it, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, not, not much like anything out of the ordinary. It just tastes like a solid IPA. It's like slightly hoppier than usual. Um, I, should I give these a rating out of five? <laughs> I'll, I'll, okay, I'll give it a rating out of five. I'll say this is a, a 3.7 out of five. All right, next up we got Kieran Ichiban. This is one of the three big names of Japanese cheap beer. Um, all three of which are way better than cheap beer almost anywhere. Well, just America. Yeah, better than, than cheap beer in America. This is one of those three. Um, I, I, I go back and forth between liking this one as a Sapporo more. This one's kind of like, you know, it's his first press, 100% malt. It's very, very, it's like one ingredient beer. It tastes exactly like beer, but like concentrated, very solid, you know, not much other flavors going on, but just like a very crisp, very beer-like beer. Oh, uh, four out of five. Um, so let's go with this. Heineken, so this is a lager. Brief uh, intro to beers. There's lagers and ales. Those are two types of beers. Um, IPA is an ale. So Heineken is, I don't usually like lagers. I'm more of an ale guy. Um, Heineken is one of the better lagers, mostly because it's not made in America. Um, I, I probably think it's slightly overrated, but it can be refreshing and the bottle looks cool. So 3.5. All right, Dogfish Head. This is one of my favorite IPA companies. Uh, one of the first ones I drank. This is Midas Touch Asian Ale. It's nine percent, so it's kind of up there. Apparently, they based the, the ingredient list off of what they found inside these like three thousand year old barrels uh, that supposedly belonged to King Midas. Um, barley, honey, white muscat grapes, and saffron. So it does taste really good. It's a little bit weird. They could, probably could have tweaked it, but they try to keep true to the original flavor. Um, but I really like this. I, I get this like celebrated at a special occasion or some shit. It's kind of expensive. I'd say 4.3. Miller High Life. This is a this is a Ben's a big fan of this one. Is that right, Ben? Yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, it's it's a solid lager. You know, it's it says a champagne of beer. It's imagine your cheap American beer, slightly more refined, slightly more uh, alcoholic. Is my guess doesn't say but it's it's crisper the, the color slightly darker it's more flavorful so it's just miller light but better um hop slam ale okay so this is the first one of bells these guys are local to michigan which is why we have a bunch of bell shit over here um this is the hop slam which is a double ipa with root of honey so double ipa is just take an ipa and make it even more hoppier so they usually have more alcohol and it's just a crazy intense flavor so this does the job well and when this is root of honey it's a very, very slight honey flavor. It's not like a very honey forward beer. So, all in all, it's a solid. It, it doesn't blow me away. I expected to really like this because I like honey, but um, all in all, it's okay. I give this a uh, 3.8. Oh, by the way, Miller High Life, 3.4. Sorry, I just I like ales. <laughs> um, Oberon, another, another one of my bells. So, this is uh, very popular in the summer months. It's an American wheat ale. So, wheat ale is like. It's not as crazy IPA, they don't, they don't use hops typically. It's a very, uh, it tastes just like wheat. It tastes like bread, which is a good thing, especially if it's cold. So Oberon's a solid pick for that because of the color of the bottle and the fact that people drink this over the summer makes it more refreshing. It might be, you know, placebo or whatever, but it's a solid beer. i say 3.9. Um, let's see, Guinness Baltimore Blonde, written in Baltimore. So I'm from around Baltimore, which is why I bought this, because I like the Maryland flag. But a blonde is an ale. I don't really know too much about blondes, but basically imagine a lager without any of the pissy flavor, closer to a wheat beer, basically just a, a golden flavor beer. So it just tastes like slightly enhanced water. So slightly citrusy, I guess. 
um, but it's like super, super easy drinking. So it doesn't necessarily, you know, wow you with the flavor, but it's just so crisp and so, you know, I don't know. So I'd say a solid four. Um, we got New Belgium. So New Belgium will have a couple by these guys up here. This is a Trippel or Triple? I don't know. What it's it. Trippel. Trippel. Uh, it's a Belgian style ale, so it's very, it's, it's, it's um, basically an ale brewed with spice, uh, brewed longer, so it's, it's more alcoholic. They actually, it's preferred to, to, to enjoy at a high, lower temperature, what am I saying, higher temperature. It says serve 48 to 50 degrees, which is kind of wild. Um, so imagine like uh, if you took a bunch of guys who like to make wine or, or whiskey or something, and they made a beer. So it's more alcoholic, it's darker, it's, it's very, very strong in flavor, and a little bit of spiciness. It's okay, honestly. I would choose like a crisper beer just because too much is going on. Um, so I say like three, two. All right, none of my bells. This is too hearted. So this is actually my gateway to IPAs, I'd say. I was introduced to this by my mountain friend, Remy, um, a bunch of years ago. And actually, now, I don't actually like it that much compared to the rest of the IPAs. But it's pretty good. It's still solid. But it was the first IPA I enjoyed. Imagine a solid IPA that gives you, like, instantly makes you think of trees and... I mean, there's a fish here, but it doesn't make you think of fish. It just makes you think of trees and, and murky waters. It's very... It's very, like, you know, it gives it a tree flavor, almost. Oh, um, three, six. Okay, another by Dogfish Head. This is a Palo Santo Marone or whatever the fuck. It's a wood-aged brown ale. So they took like a, uh, a, a brown ale, which is a type of ale, but they basically, they, they brewed it for longer and they brewed it in these, um, in these, you know, old oak barrels or something. Um, so it, the flavor is super, super strong. It's, uh, it says here a blend of roasty, vanilla, and caramel, but Someone, my friend brought this up, it kind of tastes like soy sauce, and then once he said that, it kind of ruined it for me. It's kind of true. It's super dark, super, super strong. Luckily, it's 12% alcohol, so it does warrant that flavor, but it's, if anything, it's just overpriced. I, this was like five bucks. Um, so I, I give this like a three, three, one. Okay, dokie. Um, New Belgium Fat Tire. So this is a very classic beer. I recommend this. It's one of the best cheap beers. It's carbon reasons. neutral. That's one of the reasons. It's the this beer is brewed entirely carbon neutrally, or whatever. Um, it's also just an amber ale, which is a type of ale I like a lot. Very muted flavor, just tastes like kind of a wheat ale, um, kind of a red ale, brown ale, uh, that kind of vibe. So it just tastes like, you know, kind of like autumn a little bit, but it's just a pretty chill, cheap beer that doesn't have any of the weird taste of lager, um, and also it's good for the planet. So a solid four for that one. Okay, Molson Canadian. Um, this is a cheap beer that I don't like, so I have some friends who like it. I'm offended. Yeah, so it's okay, but once again, I'm not a fan of cheap bloggers at all. So I'm just going to give this a 2-9. <laughs> um, Oktoberfest beer. Made by Bells, but actually not that great. Um, <laughs> I guess they, they brew this in the style of a German beer to celebrate Oktoberfest. Um, I don't know too much about German beers, to be honest. I've never been to Germany or anything. Um, it's okay, and it does kind of give you that, you know, fall spiciness, kind of like pumpkin kind of vibe. Um, it's okay. I'd say like a 3-1. Three, three, Blue Moon. So the original Blue Moon, I yeah, I have one up there too, is one of my favorite cheap beers, if not my favorite cheap beer, just because it's like, it's, it's you know, it's crisp, and the flavor is very simple. It's just orangey. That's it. So, uh, this is a mango wheat blue moon. So, imagine a blue moon, subtract the orange, uh, replace it with a mango, it's slightly wheatier. The flavor combination is not as good as I expected, but it's okay. I like mango, so i say a three, three. Okay, this is, a, this is the beginning of, I think, like a, a three or four pack of New Belgium funky flavors or whatever. I think they only sell these in the variety pack, which kind of shows brews why they're not as great, because I, like, I think they're just taking leftover beer and doing something fun with it. This is a Mothership Wit, wheat beer brewed with spices. So just imagine a wheat beer, like slightly funkier and spicier. I don't really remember what this tastes like, to be honest. So 
don't know, three, three flat. Okay, bells, another bells, an amber ale. I, I mentioned before I like amber ales. Um, this is like the epitome of an amber ale. If I had to pick an amber ale to define that flavor, for me at least, it would be this one. It's just, it's just the definition of amber ale. It's solid drinking. I say three, eight. Dragon's Milk. Okay, so this is a, Ben over here is a big fan of this one. Yup. Yeah. Um, it's a bourbon barrel aged stout. So first of all, stouts are very, very dark type of ale. Uh, very, very flavorful. I actually don't, I'm not a huge fan of stouts in general. Um, with one, they're like slightly higher in alcohol, and once again, they're so flavorful. This is a, uh, as far as stouts go, this is, this is very good. Um, made by New Holland, another Michigan based, I believe. Yes. Um, so this is okay. I, once again, because I don't like stouts, I'm not going to rate it that high. I'm just going to say three, four. It's, it's a five out of five. <laughs> okay, uh, back to Dogfish Head. This is their, probably their best selling IPA. This is a 60 minute IPA, which means it was brewed for 60 minutes. Um, which only gives it about 6% alcohol, and just, uh, you can taste the hoppiness, but it's not too much. So, if you want an introduction to IPA, this is it. They don't try to do anything crazy, not too many other added ingredients. It's just a nice, crisp IPA flavor. So, three, eight. Um, Elysian Space Dust IPA. So this is a funky IPA. There's a bunch of IPAs out there that have a space theme to them. I don't know why. Um, there must be a, a combination of brewing ingredients that kind of Oh, it's super hot in here. If you, I don't know if you can see my sweating. Um, what am I saying? There's a bunch of ingredients that make IPAs taste kind of sparkly, if that makes any sense at all. And these guys must be using that. It doesn't actually say... Oh, it says this brew of Chinook and Citra and Amarillo. So I don't know which one is doing it, but... It's also higher in alcohol. This is a solid 8.2%. So this is a good beer. It doesn't taste like 8.2%. The sparkliness is kind of fun. I wouldn't drink this more than two days in a row just because it's kind of out there but it's okay. So, three, five. All right, um, another, I'm just gonna grab both these at once. Just a couple more New Belgium from the Variety Pack. This is the Voodoo Ranger IPA. So this is their default IPA. As far as defaults go, it's not great. Um, but it's an IPA and it's not too bad, so I get this a solid three. This is a Liquid Paradise IPA, also Voodoo Ranger. So take the original Voodoo Ranger, make it slightly hazier and slightly more flavorful, but not not too much hoppier, just more flavorful. And you get this, so it's better. I'd say three, four. All right, we're back to Fat Tire again. I said this one is a Belgian white, um, which is just a Belgian style wheat ale. And then they basically brewed it with Orden Peel. So this is literally a Blue Moon, but I'd say it's slightly worse because Blue Moon, they know how to do their orange peel. Um, these guys are trying their best, and it's still very solid, so nothing to complain about. Also, it's good for the planet because it's fat tire. So, I forgot. Oh, the lumen's up there. I'll probably give this a three, three six. Okay, this I have no idea how we got this. It came in a big box that just appeared in our living room. It's just a bunch of German words. Maybe it's on sale somewhere. Anna got it, I think. Yeah, yeah. It is a part of Germany, so this is a legit German beer. Um, so it's a very strong lager flavor, but not like pissy lager, but actual lager flavor, which turns out I'm not a huge fan of either. I think I'm just not used to it. So, I don't know, three flat. Maybe I'm stupid. Okay, last one of the new Belgian variety pack, a sparkling lime lager. That's weird as fuck. Um, it's okay, because lime's good, and the lager flavor's not that strong, so... It's like refreshing, but it's weird. I'd say a 2.9. 2.8, actually. Okay, uh, the Poet. So this is New Holland. These guys made the dragon milk from earlier. Um, but this is an oatmeal stout. So one thing about stouts is that you can make them in a lot of different flavors. So there's coffee stouts, chocolate stouts, um, and they're usually, you know, dairy-oriented, like sweetness, um, or like oatmeal-oriented, I don't know. But this is an oatmeal stout, so it's a stout, it's not as dark, it kind of tastes more bready and oatmeal -y and like roasted, like a light roasted coffee-esque. Um, frankly, this was a while ago, I don't remember how this was, but I'm like stouts, so. I'm a, I'm a big fan of it, the oatmeal flavor is nice, okay. but I w it's not a beer you want to drink with dinner, it's the beer you have with dessert. 
Yeah. Here we have the dessert. There you go. So I'll just give it a three, and then we'll argue about it later. All right, last few here. Blue Moon, my favorite, if not well, one of my favorite cheap beers. Um, just a Belgian white, which is like a solid ale type, except it's brewed with a Valencia orange peel, which gives it that punch. So. You know, if this was an expensive beer, I would say it would be too simple, but it's cheap. If you order at a restaurant, they'll pop in an orange peel. You can get a bunch of these, like four or five, and you won't spend too much money. So, I guess this is a four, four. No, four, three. All right, Dogfish had 90 minutes. Um, so, earlier it was a Dogfish had 60 minute. This is the 90, there's also 120, and that could be all they have. So, this is, take the 60 minute, make it slightly more alcoholic, slightly hoppier, is 9% this time, so I like the 90 out of the, the best out of 60, 90, 120. Um, 120 is a, a bit too much, 60 is a bit too little. This is just right in terms of hoppiness, just a classic IP flavor. I say a solid 4-2. Four, four um, I'm going to go to this one next. This is a mead. I put it up here because it's a glass bottle, but it's just a local mead. Uh, apple, cinnamon, honey mead. So, of course it tastes amazing. It just tastes like apple, cinnamon, honey syrup. Um, so I'm not going to rate this, but it's very good. It's like apple pie in a bottle, as the back says. So, drink mead. It's kind of fun. And lastly, 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 this is the first thing I bought when I turned 21. Um, when I turned 21, the code was happening, so we didn't go out or anything. I think we went out like the, day, the next day or something. But that night, I just went to a liquor store with, with, my, with Anna and... I just chose this because it looked weird. Um, it's a Samuel, but they just say Sam apostrophe L. A Samuel Smith, which is a British, yeah, yeah, part of English, part of England, a British ale, um, organic handcrafted fruit ale with apricot. So just imagine a flavorless ale paired with an apricot juice and some added flavors. So what can I say? It tastes amazing. I don't know how high quality it is. The art makes it look like it's high quality, but I think it's just because it's from England and all their shit looks old. Um, and it's organic. So yeah, this is a quality ale. Uh, it, it just tastes really good. So I'd say a solid 3.9. Whew! All right, and that's, goes, that's all the glass beer I've been drinking this past year. And we're moving out in a couple days, so that's why we're finally getting rid of these boys. All right, thanks for watching. Peace out.